Hello and welcome to the maths lesson. Today we are going to learn about pie charts. Look at this picture on your screen. Today you will learn how to draw and interpret pie charts. So let's begin. In a pie chart, the data is represented by a circle and each category of it is represented by a sector of the circle. Sector is nothing but a slice of the circle. Each sector represents a certain proportion or percentage of the total. The pie chart represents 18 people. The question is how many chose yellow? If you look at this pie chart, the whole of the data is divided into two parts, purple and yellow. If the whole is 18, then the yellow is obviously half of 18, which is 9. This pie chart represents 39 people. How many chose red? <coughs> if you look at the different sectors of this pie chart, it has been divided into three equal parts. Each part represents one third of the circle. So red is one third of 39. So one third of 39 gives you 13. How many people are represented by this pie chart? Here a slightly different question. We need to find the total number of people. So there are four quarters. One quarter represents 11 people. So each quarter will represent 11 people. So altogether there are 44 people. All right. Now let's learn how to draw a pie chart. Look at the question. In a survey of people were asked to indicate which one of the subjects they like the best. The information is given in the table. Alright, now if you look at the table here, 12 people liked maths, 7 liked English, 8 science, 4 languages and 5 people liked other subjects. So first thing we need to do is find the total number of people. How many people were surveyed <coughs> by adding all this? 12 plus 7 plus 8 plus 4 plus 5, that gives you 36. So in total, there were 36 people surveyed. Now to draw a pie chart, we need a circle. Here is a circle with the center over here. Now you know in a circle, when you take a complete turn, there are 360 degrees. So this whole turn represents 360 degrees. So I need to divide this circle into different sectors for maths, English, science, languages and others. So in order to do that, I need to know the angle for each subject. What is What angle represents maths, English, science and so on? So I need to calculate the angle for each subject. So to do that, I know there are 12 people out of 36 people who liked maths. So we can write this as a fraction, 12 upon 36. And since the complete turn is 360 degrees, we multiply 12 upon 36 by 360. So there we go. Now, in order to simplify this problem here, there are various approaches you can go through. Either you can simplify 12 and 36, which gives you one third and then 360 divided by 3 is 120. Or you can divide 360 by 36 first. So 360 divided by 36 will give you 10. And then 12 times by 10 is 120. Now since you know you have to multiply by 10 each time, you can write the problem again. For English, it's 7 out of 36 times 360. 360 divided by 36 is 10, so 7 times by 10 is 70, and so on. Same numbers here, only thing, the numerator over here is different. So 360 divided by 36 is 10, so multiply every number by 10. So 8 times by 10 is 80, and then 4 times by 10 is 40, and then 50. Alright, now we know the angle for each subject here. For mathematics, we've got 20, 120, English 70, science 80, and so on. First, even before we draw these angles over here, 
we need to make sure that these angles add up to 360 degrees. So please add and check. Yes, it gives us 360 degrees. Now you need a ruler, protractor and a pencil. Okay, I take my ruler from the center to the circumference. I draw a line. After that, take the protractor and then place the protractor, the baseline of the protractor over the line that you drew just now, the red line. And since we are drawing 120 degrees, you should know how to draw an angle. So it's over here, this is the arm and this is the baseline. So 120 degrees all the way up to over here. So that's 120 degrees. And this angle represents mathematics. Now we need to draw for English 70 degrees. Take your protractor, place it on the line over here and then count 70 all the way up to here and then draw a line and then write down English for that and so on. We need to draw 80 degrees for signs. This is the line that you count looking for, not this line and then from here 80 is right over here and then that represents signs and then we need to divide this into 40 and 50 degrees for language we need 40 degrees this is our baseline here 40 degrees over here and then we draw a line and write down label the sector by the subject and others remember you should always label the sectors in a pie chart okay. in case if you don't have enough space then you can use a key just outside the circle shade different sectors with different colors and then use a key all right so that's how we draw a pie chart let us look at another example and don't forget to give a title to your pie chart here we go favorite subject here is another question a different one a pie chart is already given to you. Your teacher asked her pupils if they recycled plastic or glass. Plastic and glass. The pie chart shows the results. The result is already given on here. None of them recycle anything. Some of them recycle plastic only. Some of them recycle both. Some of them recycle only glass. Let's look at the question. Five pupils answered neither. So here, neither five pupils this sector represents five pupils and one more information given over here that is 60 degree is equal to five pupils the question goes on to say how many pupils answered plastic only so this is what we need to find how many pupils are here how many students what we know so far is 60 degree represents five pupils okay see over here it's given 60 degree neither five pupils so now we need to find 96 degrees yes so we need to find 96 degrees equal to how many pupils first let's find we can use different methods here this is a direct proportion question so if 60 degrees equal to five pupils let's use the unitary method in unitary method we find one degree equal to how many pupils so we divide both the sides by 60 degrees 60 divided by 60 is 1 so we're finding one degree equal to 5 divided by 60 60 divided by 60 is 1 so we know one degree represents 5 over 60 pupils now that we have to find for 96 degrees so what do we do when we know 1 degrees? What do we do to find 96 degrees? We multiply 96. We multiply by 96. So multiply by 96. This fraction. So 5 over 60 times 96. This is calculation you are supposed to calculate. Okay. We can simplify 5 over 60. 5 over 60 will give you 1 over 12. And then 96 divided by 12 will give you 8. So 96 degrees represents 8 pupils. So that's all. That's the end of the lesson. I hope this lesson will help you. 